basically, when the U.S. gets involved, they'll, they'll turn countries into parking lots. I know, I know. Uh, but other countries will also turn yes. Israel uh, into an ashtray. And uh, um, we, we may... Uh, we may be on the verge of seeing the, the end of Zionism. Uh, this is extremely serious, what's happening right now. This may be the end of the Israeli state. Uh, it would also be the end of Lebanon and Iran and Syria. And, um, you know, the entire Middle East will be on fire. But we may see the end of the Jewish state of Israel. When he was asked about peace in the Middle East, the late president of Egypt, Gamal Abdel Nasser, stated, the Jews will never be able to live here in peace because they left here black but came back white. While no one's forcing you to believe this, the prophecy that the so-called black people are in fact the true Hebrew Israelites of the Bible will soon be revealed. Hitler said, even in his death, he will start World War III. One of his soldiers asked, how? And Hitler replied, the day that mankind finds out that I was trying to defend this nation, Germany, from then that's the day World War III will start. For on that day, mankind will learn that I was trying to save my nation from the Freemasons, the Illuminati, the Jews, for if the Americans wins the war, then they will conquer the world and may forever be a slave to the Jews and they will try to conquer God. Do you know who America has in its possession? No, the soldier replied. The Americans has the jewels of God. The Americans have stolen God's precious jewels. What do you mean his precious jewels? The soldier asked. Hitler said, America has stolen the Jews, the Jews of God, his jewelry, the Negroes. They are the true Hebrews. It's literally just a matter of time before the entire world finds out who the so-called black people really are. Now let's think about what the late president of Egypt, Nassar, said as well as what Hitler said as we listen to what these reports are saying is currently happening in the Middle East today. Middle East surge. Doc Burkhardt's got the, uh, the details from this Axios article. Yes, Rick, and uh, some of the key points that uh, were brought out in this article. First of all, thousands of U.S. military personnel have been shifted around the globe or told to prepare for deployment. 2,000 troops were ordered to deploy to the Middle East. The Pentagon is surging support to Israel, which includes providing air defenses and munitions, and an armada of American ships and aircraft are quickly amassing around Israel. Some other points that uh, the article brought out, that there are now two aircraft carrier groups, the USS Gerald Ford and the USS Dwight D. Eisenhower, each one of those, 7,000 sailors on board. Two amphibious Navy ships are equipped with thousands of Marines. The White House is preparing to use U.S. military force if Hezbollah attacks Israel. And that is likely imminent. <laughs> uh, in fact, I'm surprised it hasn't happened already. One of the uh, more ominous signs of World War, this Reuters report, U.S. sending additional air defense systems to Middle East, says the Pentagon. Doc, they're not sending just Patriot uh, air defense systems, they're sending THAAD. Yes. And THAAD is a terminal high altitude area defense. So the United States, according to Reuters, the U.S. will send a THAAD system and additional Patriot air defense missile system battalions to the Middle East, according to the Pentagon over the weekend. Uh, why, why is uh, this an ominous sign? All right, the Patriot air defense systems shoot down missiles in the atmosphere. Yes. A THAAD shoots them down outside of the atmosphere. Yes, the high altitude is the key part there. So, 
Hezbollah, Hamas, would be shooting rockets into Israel that the Patriot systems would shoot down. Right. But, but why would you need a high altitude air defense system for either Iran or for Russia? That's right. And that would be an ICBM coming in with a nuclear warhead. Right. So that tells you where their line of thinking is taking it, that this could possibly go nuclear. Many people think that we are at the end of the world. And I say it quite a bit, but I guess I should explain this. Each part of creation, which is seven, has a beginning, a middle, and an end. Quite often at the end of my videos, I mention the last days or the dark hour that we're living in, which I probably should explain to you. From what I understand, there are seven days, and each day is a thousand years. And according to specific prophecies and biblical markers, we are living in the end time, but it's not the end yet. As we see here in Matthew chapter 24 and verse 6, where it says, And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. So judging by Matthew chapter 24, we can gather or conclude that we are in fact in the end times, but the real question is, what part of the end are we in? Isn't it crazy that we can predict anything else? We can look up at the sky and say there's going to be bad weather, but we cannot discern the signs of the times. Let's take a look at Matthew chapter 16 and verse 3, and it reads, and in the morning it will be foul weather today, for the sky is red and lowering. O ye hypocrites, ye can discern the face of the sky, but can ye not discern the signs of the times? see Jerusalem compassed with armies, then know that the desolation thereof is nigh. It's hard to even explain exactly just the mass casualties that happened right here. In fact, the Israeli military says they still don't have a clear number, but I'm talking to some of the soldiers and they say what they've witnessed as they've been walking through these different houses, these different communities, uh, babies. 18. The Bible talks about signs of the second coming of Jesus, with one being, I will make rivers flow on barren heights and springs within the valleys. I will turn the desert into pools of water and the parched ground into springs. Well, you see, as impossible as it may sound, this river just exploded out of nowhere in the Middle Eastern desert, fulfilling the 2,500-year-old prophecy right in front of our eyes. And even though many people don't believe in the Bible, maybe we should all start taking the book seriously. Why would Nassar, the president of Egypt, say that the Jews left black but came back white so they'll never have peace? Well, in Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 68 it says, And Yahuwah shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. By the way whereof I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies for bond men and bond women and no man shall buy you. Well, there's historical facts as well as you see it here in Deuteronomy chapter 28 and 68. The only people who fit this prophecy is the Negroes. Our ancestors were carried from the region of Egypt and spread it abroad to the four corners of the earth. In some of our captivities, our ancestors were able to buy each other out of captivity. But this captivity is nothing like that. That's why here in Deuteronomy 28 and 68 it says, No man shall buy you. This also means that no one will be able to save us. Not Martin Luther King, not Malcolm X, not John Lewis, not Rosa Parks, not Booger T. Washington, not Frederick Douglass, etc., etc. The Jewish people over in Israel now 
do not fit the biblical curses in Deuteronomy 28 and you will not find the Holocaust anywhere in the Bible. But there is a nation of people who fit all those curses in Deuteronomy 28. The Most High told us that if we listened to his voice and kept his commandments, that we would be blessed above all nations of the earth. Let's look at Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 15 because we need to know exactly why we're under these curses. It reads, But it shall come to pass if thou will not listen to the voice of Yahuwah thy Elohim to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes which I command thee this day that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. The Most High said, Turn back to me, and I will turn back to you. If we just get back to the Most High's laws, statutes, and commandments, the remnant will be saved out of this captivity. But let's go back to the verse in Deuteronomy 28 and 68, and let's take a look at the word Egypt. So if you read this verse in its original Hebrew text, the word would be Mitzrayim, not Egypt. So he, the Hebrew word for Egypt is Mitzrayim, which is a masculine plural noun in Hebrew. It stems from a Hebrewic root, which means to bind, shackle, or imprison, to be bound or a boundary. And lastly, it means bondage, servitude, or slavery. So now when we read this again, it makes more sense because it's kind of a play on words. You have to be able to decode these verses if it's for you. That is for you to understand because the Bible is not for everyone. So let's go ahead and read Deuteronomy 28 and 68 again and it's going to make a lot more sense. And Yahuwah shall bring thee into Egypt again, into bondage again, into slavery again, with ships. And the remainder of this verse can be attached to historical facts. As Yahuwah scattered us to the four corners of the earth in different lands to be sold to our enemies for bondmen and bondwomen. Now, many of you may argue that we're no longer in physical slavery, and that's true. However, we are still in the land of our captivity. It's an illusion to think that we are not in captivity any longer because it's not physical. Now, the trick seems to be that since we're not in bondage physically, um, we're free. But if you just take a look around at the state of our nation, you'll understand that we're really not free. Many of us are in mental captivity. And while we may be five to six generations removed from the horrors of slavery, the trauma of our ancestors being enslaved has been carried over through the ages. You know, it's been engraved in our minds that we are inferior when really we are the most powerful people on the planet of this earth and we are very resilient people. After all that we've been through, you would think that we would be all mentally ill or extinct since they've been trying for centuries to exterminate the Negroes. But this is just a testimony within itself that we are in fact the chosen people of the Most High. But all of this chastisement that we're going through is for a reason. We need to consider getting back to the Most High's laws, statutes, and commandments, and not just consider, get back to doing them. Because these laws, statutes, and commandments are what govern our culture anyway. I'll go ahead and read Hosea chapter 4 and verse 6, and then I'm going to say Shalom. It reads, My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee, that thou shalt be no priest to me. Seeing that thou hast forgotten the law of thy Elohim, I will also forget thy children. The reason that so-called black people are destroyed is because they lack biblical knowledge, and when you try to give it to them, they reject it. So the Most High said, I'm also going to reject you 
and I'm going to forget your children. So these curses don't just affect the people who are not considering keeping the law, it also affects our children generation after generation. But as you can see, we have almost no time left. Bible prophecies are being fulfilled and we are in the last days. This concludes my message for today. May Yah bless you and keep you and your family safe in this dark hour. Shalom.